The Paisley I grew up in was the largest town in Scotland with all the trappings of its world-renowned threadmills, albeit by then coming to the end of more than a hundred years of global domination. My Aunt Pearl was one of thousands of women who worked in Anchor Mills, which is now a swanky apartment block. At one point, Paisley produced 90% of the world's thread and many of the workers were women, which meant many Paisley families had two incomes, which was a rarity in those days. I went to high school not far from here and recall the excitement of buying a new lipstick at Woolworths or being taken to Goldbergs at Arnott's to pick out an outfit. I never really appreciated the Abbey back then, but now understand through my work on Paisley's bid for City of Culture that it is a very significant building in Scotland's religious life. This timeline tells the story and some beautiful stained glass and amazing acoustics are among the reasons to visit. Opposite the Abbey is the Town Hall, paid for back in 1882 by George Clark of the thread-making Clark family. I remember dancing displays here and my brother has seen some great gigs. This is my favourite coffee shop in Paisley, but many years ago it was the co-op and I had a Saturday job selling household goods one floor up in the mid-70s. Wow, I've not been back to this place since it reopened. It's one of more than 100 listed buildings in the town, the highest concentration in Scotland outside of Edinburgh. Who remembers Shuttles nightclub here on the corner? Far too handy for Laverty's Wine Bar and Castle Meachie Chippy. Across the street is Paisley Art Centre. Um, it's a fab wee venue which has the distinction of being the former Lee Kirk where John Witherspoon, a signature of the American Declaration of Independence, used to preach. This is one of my favourite views of the high church where my mum and dad got married. It's part of the historic Oakshaw area and I would thoroughly recommend a tour. This part of town shows two very different sides to 21st century Paisley. On the left we've got the University of West of Scotland, ultra modern with about 16,000 students. And on the right, Paisley Museum and Observatory which owe their very existence to the thread making Coates family. I can remember school trips and more recently taking journalists in to see the museum's world-renowned textile collection and some absolutely breathtaking ornithological drawings. This is one of the main galleries in Paisley Museum and here we are in front of one of its most famous exhibits, Buddy the Lion, which inspired the Pride of Paisley public art trail. Um, there's some wonderful paintings in the Scottish Colourists and Glasgow Boys Gallery and of course there's a whole section dedicated to the iconic and famous Paisley pattern. The town's weaver's ingenuity in incorporating the famous tear-shaped design into clothes of all descriptions, but especially shawls, made the Paisley name synonymous with the motif, which is still popular in fashion around the world today. The museum is closing in September for a four-year, £42 million transformation into a world-class attraction. But in the meantime, there's plenty to see.